What's happening all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and join me today for my overview of the Superman Birthright Deluxe Edition from DC Comics. So, let's get this started. And welcome back everybody. So, if you're enjoying these type of videos, I do recommend subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day and these type of videos. All right, let's go ahead and talk about one of my favorite origin stories for the Man of Steel, Superman Birthright. What we're looking at here is the direct market cover. That's right, DC starting to do some direct market standard edition covers. This one is supplied by Lionel Francis Yu. On the left-hand side, it's your standard edition cover. That one's gonna be available everywhere. Uh, that one is also supplied by Lionel Francis Yu. Everything else on the inside is identical, though, including underneath the dust jacket. So let's take a closer look at the direct market cover. Uh, this is an image from, I think, issue 8 or 9, if I'm not mistaken. It's not a new image, but it does feature the Man of Steel there with his Kryptonian heritage background. Superman Birthright, the deluxe edition with the Superman logo there, DC logo down there, Mark Wade, Lionel Francis Yu, Jerry Alangulan, and Dave McKegg. Lionel Francis Yu is the penciler. Jerry Alangulan was his collaborator for so many years. They worked together. Uh, it was his inker. Uh, he passed away, I believe, in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And Dave McKegg being the colorist. The spine of the book, Superman Birthright, the deluxe edition. There are the creators, the DC logo, and the Superman logo up at the top. The legend retold. They already know what this was. And it has a really interesting origin, I, uh, the, the story behind the story. Uh, retail price, $49.99. Printed and bound in Canada. Awesome. Let's We're going to be taking a look at this here in a second. This is the first time that this particular story has been collected in Deluxe Edition. As far as I'm aware, this is the home of Collected Editions, so I should be aware. But I have been wrong, and you wonderful folks never ever hesitate to correct me, please. And, and some of you don't, like, whether the way I pronounce a certain name uh, or whether it's my wife correcting me three times a day. She's probably going to correct me while I'm editing this video, and rightly so. Okay, so here we have it compared to the trade paperback release. It's had a standard size hardcover release. It's been released many times. Uh, it was a 12-issue maxi series that came out in 2003. We're looking at it underneath the dust jacket, and it's this iconic image of Superman, including him flying up into the air. Love that. Um, but yes, 2003 is when the series came out. Uh, this is a retelling of his origin, so an updated origin, and I'll talk a little bit about the history of that. But if you watch my Where to Start Reading Superman, or the Best Places to Start Reading Superman in Collected Editions video, this definitely made it on that list. As far as spoilers, I don't... Sure, maybe a little bit of spoilers, talking about what happens in here, what's different in here, than what happened in Man of Steel by John Byrne, or what happens in... The Secret Identity by Jeff Johns, also retelling the origin of the character. So just in case minor spoilers about what is being retold in here. I like to warn people ahead of time in case this is the first time they're reading a story. Or it might be somebody that doesn't know anything about Superman, have never watched a movie, or played a video game, or have watched the animated series or read a comic book video game. What? I was thinking of the arcade game, the uh, late 80s, early 90s arcade game, where there were two Superman, one was red and one was blue. Anyway, all right. Let's crack this open and get started. So, opening this up, there we have the image of space and the rocket flying through space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the paper quality is this matte paper. It's not a glossy paper stock that they're using. Uh, here are dedications from Mark Wade, Lionel Yu, and Jerry Alangulan. An introduction here... I believe this has been previously printed before from the people, the showrunners of Smallville. Uh, yes, 2004. And then the very first issue. And it kicks off like every other Superman origin story begins with planet Krypton about to blow up. And Kal-El's parents sending him out into space because they know that even sending him into the unknown, even though they don't know what's going to happen to him, is still a better option than staying on this doomed planet that is about to blow up. There's a beautiful moment here 
where, you know, the mom's like, you've given him everything a father could possibly give a child, and that is hope. And that's what they rely on. You know, as the planet crumbles, as it falls apart, they secure the spaceship and kiss him goodbye and send him off to space. This is a beautiful moment that we've seen over and over again, but for some reason it still pulls at my heartstrings every time. Especially now that I'm a father, letting my child go into the unknown, but knowing that option is better than staying with me. Oh man, it destroys me. So off he goes. Out in the space, DC Comics proudly presents the story of Krypton's last son as the Krypton blows up and the spaceship just goes into the nowhere, to the unknown. And it's crashing and we all know where it crash lands. And then we get this image right here. It's a collage of things that have happened while he was in Smallville because we fast forward 25 years later to West Africa. So everything that we just saw has been done over and over again, by the way. Look at that image of a hand just thrusting the rocket into the unknown. Or is it a hand trying to catch a bullet? Nice. Nice transition. I love that. But yes, it is a hand catching a bullet. And here he is, Clark Kent in West Africa, being his own man, trying to find himself, trying to find a place in the world, becoming friends with this gentleman right here named Kobe, who looks a lot like Dwayne McDuffie. And I, I don't, I never found out if that, that's who it's based on, but I'd like to think that it was. And... He gets caught in between this war in this West African tribe between two opposing forces. He's learning more about his Kryptonian heritage. He's away from Smallville. 20, well, I guess 25 plus years old right now. And it's a lot different than the origins we've seen before. Like this is iconic Action Comics number one shot right there. But to give just a little bit away of what happens, he ends up leaving West Africa because... Well, something tragic happens, of course. That's just the life of a superhero sometimes. And somebody finds out about his identity. And she was like, your secret is safe with me. This is Kobe's sister. And she promises him that his secret is safe with her, even though she hated him at first. So he goes back home and reunites with his parents. And you get to see Martha. They updated history, so now... That she is obsessed with aliens. She's on the internet. She's on forums, I assume. Because this is 2003. Not a lot of social media back then. But you get to find out that he was gone for a while. And he's made up his mind. That he wants to be a better person for all of Earth. So that's where the iconic costume comes from. And I love this. I love, love the relationship between Jonathan Kent and Clark, his son. Because he feels so distant from him. He feels like he's losing his son. Uh, because his son has become obsessed with finding out his lineage, his heritage. What is to become of him. And, you know, him and Martha get into arguments. And he doesn't like the fact that he's been gone so many years. There's a moment here where he replies to Martha when she says, We need to remind him that he's just like you and me. And he says, Well, that's just it, isn't it? He's not. And she's worried that Clark, with his super hearing, can hear him. And sure enough, he does. So they have a conversation because his dad is just letting it out on this alien rocket ship. He's like, what's going on? What is happening, Dad? What What is this about? And I love the fact that he, he calls him out on hearing him. Is that what you meant when you said, I wasn't like you? And he says, I didn't mean for you to hear. It doesn't matter not like you. Because he wants to confront his son about the decisions that he's making. And I love this moment right here. It, I, like, it, it's such a beautiful... and Father-son, father-daughter, mother-daughter. It's just a beautiful moment that is captured here. And the lesson about letting go of the ones that you love. Making your own place in the world. And he reminds his father... So going back to this, when he tells his father, not like you, but he's finishing that sentence with not like a man who left home when he was 18 to find his place in the world, who was strong enough to go figure out who he was rather than let others decide that for him. Is that hard for you? And Kent, Jonathan says, very, oh man, this line, 
then where do you think I got the courage to do the same thing? Oh. Every time. So they go back and meet Martha. He explains, it's not like I'm going to become a new man. I'm not leaving your name behind, which is what Jonathan was worried about. I'm just going to make a new identity because I have to separate the superhero from my hu human identity. And I love the fact that, you know, this this very scene right here where she, uh, Martha's telling him how to stand because you can't stand like you usually do because of your big shoulders. So you have to appear smaller and they put the glasses on him and sure enough it works so he goes over to metropolis and that's where the story takes us uh there are a few differences of course here with his superpowers uh there's some wonderful images uh the big retcon that they did here or the big change that they made with his origin was that lex luther and him knew each other when they were young so Lex and Clark Kent were friends because Lex lived in Smallville. Uh, he was a kid that was picked on, but very, very smart. Too smart for his own good. Now, if you're familiar with Smallville, you're probably thinking, oh, that's the exact same thing they did in Smallville. Yes, to an extent, because in this version, Lex was always kind of evil. Deep down inside, he was trying to do maniacal things uh, to the point where he's not listening to Clark, not listening to anybody. And Clark blames a lot of what happened to Lex in, at the young age on himself. So this story really shows how to do an updated origin. It, it's one of my favorite Superman stories. It's an origin that's well done. I never thought that somebody like Lionel Francis Yu would be a good artist for Superman's origin just because his art style is so different. But when you read this, you're going to be like, holy crap, this works. This works on every level as far as modernizing a classic story while still leaving elements of what makes Superman Superman. Both Mark Wade and Lionel Francis Yu understood that. And the homework shows. My gosh. It's an awesome story that... The origin behind this is that DC was like, okay, we need to update Superman's origin. Mark Wade, you want to do it? Mark Wade's like, hell yes! Dream project, let's do it. I believe he got to choose the artist, if I'm not mistaken, Lionel Francis Yu. And together they retold his origin. Now, the idea was to have this be non-canon. Was not going to be part of actual continuity. They were going to stick with Man of Steel. But this was received so damn well that DC said, You know what? <laughs> Sorry, John Byrne. Uh, we just updated Superman's origin. And I love Man of Steel. That is one of my most favorite stories. I still want that omnibus. Um, but it was in time that we updated the origin. It's something that you're just kind of accustomed to DC doing. And this happened in 2003. I keep that in mind because Man of Steel was 1986 after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Two years later, with Infinite Crisis, they decided to go back and retell the origin of Superman. This time it was Jeff Johns and Gary Frank in the pages of Secret Identity. So this became non-canon again. But like I always tell people, you know, if you read it, you enjoyed it, and you got so much from it, all that matters is that it's canon to you. And honestly, you can still work some things into the history of Superman from here. There were a lot of things borrowed for... Here, let me just show you. Some good moments with uh, Jimmy Olsen here too. There were a lot of things that were borrowed from this for the Man of Steel movie. Like the big battle with, I'll just leave it at, the Kryptonians that come to Metropolis to destroy it. I love this. When he's hitting his chest and he's saying, this is the symbol by which Krypton shall be forever remembered by the human race. And Superman's like, like, hell, oh man. Look how pissed he looks. He's ready for battle. Oh this this final sequence is awesome. And there's a beautiful reminder about the relationship between him and Lois Lane. I've talked about Metropolis. I've talked about Jonathan. I've talked about uh, Lex Luthor. But there's a beautiful reminder of what makes his relationship work with Lois Lane. And I think a few writers get it. It's not like Lois Lane is this goddess that is put on pedestals and that is worthy of Superman's love. But rather that he is worthy of her. 
And he reminds us of that. Mark Wade does through these pages, the way that she accepts him when no one else does. Uh, there are moments in here I don't want to really get into. If you want to watch our old reader, new reader, which we did about three, four years ago, you're more than welcome to. But there are moments in here where humanity doesn't accept Superman. They turn on him. And when you're about to give up on life, when that happens, when everyone seems to turn their back on you, this one woman, this lady that finds good in you still believes in you and that's all he needs to keep on fighting. Oh, I think that, that, that is a beautiful moment captured through these very pages. And, and looking back at this, um, I'm just reminded of how wonderful Alangulan's inks were on Lionel Francis U. He made his art and composition really stand out and just he's very missed yeah we lost him in uh 2019 i think the last thing he was working on was um x-men with lionel francis you shame especially when you're used to two creators working together so often uh this book has 304 pages let's look in the back here for some extras there's a new afterword by mark wade Reminding us of why Superman is the single most important moral lesson there is in our history. Here's a little behind the scenes of the making of the Man of Steel. Costume. Uh, Clark Kent there. Lois Lane. Ma Kent. Lex Luthor. The flag of Krypton. And some sketches of the Kryptonians. And the little bio behind the creators here. Let's see if they... Yeah, they updated Jerry Alangulans right here. Passed away in December... 2019 um as i mentioned the book is printed on this matte paper and it is sewn binding but man it's got a ton of glue it's kind of hard to see the actual bunches going into this inner uh, ribbon right there but it does lay over rather nice whether you're towards the front or towards the end of the book but that's it that as they say is that. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this deluxe edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking this up, and if you are, which cover you're going to get. And if you've read this before, and what you think about the story, what your favorite origin story for Superman is. And if you've never read it, you're going completely blind, hope you enjoy it, you're in for a treat. But that's it everyone, any questions leave them down below, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there, much love.